And uh, let's dive in. I'm Joseph, you guys. Nice to meet some of you who we haven't met before. Uh, thank you guys for joining us today. Hope you guys are having a great day, having fun, enjoying the abundance, you know, in the in the world and in the industry right now. And um, some of you guys know that uh, my studio, Perlman Acting Academy, we work with actors all over the world online via Zoom. Uh, there, there are many things that our community speaks to about why they prefer to do that is one being that they're working in the correct medium on camera, two being they're not losing jobs uh, due to you know any type of COVID. A lot of actors are losing jobs and being replaced uh, you know, if they test positive and, and also the intimacy of being able to um, dial in from your home studio and have industry members from all over the world uh, put eyes on the work. So thank you guys so much for signing up for the um, the four week orchestra cycle. We, this was sort of part of a social media campaign where we are giving away a four week cycle of classes at the studio orchestra cycle where you get up every class, have an undeniable acting breakthrough um, every single time you get up and you work uh, in preparation for episodic season. So we're registering the last couple spaces of episodic season. I'll show you guys how you can um, take advantage of that. And we're going to announce the winner. And so I'm sure you guys have all, um, you know, done everything you're supposed to do. But registering for this event was one of those things. And I would say at this point, if you haven't, uh, give us a follow on Instagram. You don't have to, you know, like a post or tag a friend anymore because we're doing this event. And um, yeah, the other thing that some of you guys know who are studio members is that we have these individual classes taught by me, our phenomenal faculty members, people like Annie Chang, who's one of the regulars on um, Peacemaker and uh, Super Pumped and on and on and on. Each class um, is part of a larger connected global community. Uh, and we have so many incredible events for our members like career strategy events, uh, industry guest speaking events, collaboration with uh, leaders of Asia's uh, entertainment industry, Amazon Studios, on and on and on. And um, and we're a next level studio in that we bring the industry to you guys. So it's a really exciting community. We also are connected in the background of our community by Slack. Slack, for those of you who don't know, you can think of it as a community bulletin board. It's not another chore, it's not a Facebook. Um, and some of our members have created these phenomenal breakout groups, people like Eugene Simon, who some of you guys may know as Lancel Lannister from Game of Thrones, uh, has created an acting book club group meeting every Tuesday. We have Katie Austin, some of these actors may be here today, uh, created F Friday Night Rights. It's a writing group. Um, so again, we're a community of working actors and actors in pursuit of work, filmmakers, casting directors, writers, directors all over the world on camera um you know every week and you guys are welcome to come watch for free if you haven't uh, so i want to dive right in today and again welcome you guys and thank you guys for sharing your time today and, and being here i just want to take a look and and see that we it's so exciting because we have many folks in here who i don't know so it's great to meet some of you you can feel free to engage with your videos on with your videos off i like to see you guys it's, it's, it's a lot more fun for me doing something like this than just some of you guys know me from the backstage videos where I'm trusting their people that are out there and I'm talking to you guys, but it's so lovely to see your faces. Um, just one of the things that obviously as a studio, we help actors launch their careers faster with less effort by changing their perspective, looking at the industry from the top down, not from the bottom up. Some of you guys know us from the hook work we do, finding the hook. How do you make those brave, dangerous choices to guarantee audition wins, callbacks, um, booked roles, making fans of production and casting, et cetera. But a lot of actors know us from the work that we do on the hook, which is finding a hook, which is the thing that makes it so you don't have to act. Um, so let's dive into the conversation. You guys are here to hear about how to build game-changing relationships with major production companies. And honestly, some of you guys have heard some of this conversation before, and there may be a little review, but we're gonna be pushing into some new territory today, and I'll explain it. I'm gonna be specifically talking about 
the mindset of cold calling. I, it may have made a more interesting title, and it's really more interesting for me is the mindset that goes into how do you build a game-changing relationship with a major production company in under 30 seconds um, starting on a telephone? And that's possible. So I want to give you a little background just to make sure we're all on the same page. And then there will definitely be some offer, some opportunity at the end where we'll have some q and I'll take some questions from you guys. So sit back, relax, take notes, and, um, and, and I'm going to dive right in. So here's what we know. I'm going to lay a little groundwork for everybody. Here's what we know. Uh, this is the Olympics. It's not enough to be good. You have to be great. Okay. When you're great, I mean, it's the Olympics. And, and I always say your great potential is not for somebody to give back to you because you, you know, paid them to teach you. It's already there. Everything that you need that's of value is unpacked from inside of you. And too often we make the mistake I mean, I feel in life as well as this industry is looking outside of ourselves for answers when we have the power inside of us um, to make these incredible acting choices and to be people that people personally like and want to work with. It all comes from you. So there's nothing that we're going to talk about that doesn't first come from you from you. This is really important. So it's the Olympics. It's not enough to be good. You have to be great. I think you guys know that, you know, that's why many of you guys are here. When you're great, <clears throat> by the way, for those that don't know, I'm based in Los Angeles um, and I've been doing this for a while and I'm happy to an answer any questions about sort of my personal story. I have a six-year-old that just started first grade. I just moved to a different school and, you know, so there's, there's always these different parts of our lives. So I'm a parent. Um, uh, I'm in a family. I, I, you know, run an acting studio, and um, we are some amazing human beings. One of our members said, "Your vibe attracts your tribe," and I'm very lucky in that. Yes, I did create this community, but it's taken a life of its own, and we're so lucky to have all of these amazing people. Um, and we are stronger collectively uh, in such a beautiful way than we ever were individually, and on such a global scale. So again. There are human beings behind the scenes of this. So I just came from, you know, handling a transition to a different first grade school where my daughter will be a lot happier. So I, it's just important to acknowledge that stuff for me. When, you, when you're great, there are no rules. There are more opportunities for bravery. When you look at the industry from the top down versus the bottom up, you realize there's a right way to build relationships with major production companies and casting, obviously via phone to get in the mix for some of the industry's biggest roles before they ever get to casting. You as actors have a right and a responsibility. One of my favorite quotes is Max Planck. He's the um, grandfather of quantum mechanics. And he said, when you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at change. I, I, that blows my mind. When you change your perspective on things, those things change. And when you start to look at the industry from the top down, as one of our wonderful members, uh, Lyndon, once said, instead of from the bottom up, you expect things to work differently. This is about expectations, expecting success. Uh, and that's a whole other question. You know, it's, it's the mindset work that we do, which is living in the end and working backwards, changing your perspective. As Einstein said, solving problems from another level of consciousness, those are the most beautiful way to solve problems. Um, and we need to forget a lot of things in order to do that. So you have a right and a responsibility to build relationships in this way, but we get stuck on stories of suffering. Like we need an agent or a manager to do all of this for us. This is a big one. No matter where's an, where an actor's at is there's this narrative. Um, some of you guys, I know, teach a, teach a masterclass for New York university Tish and what a lot of actors don't, I think a lot of actors are in search of agents and managers. And my best advice is to stop looking for agents and managers because the true strategy partners that you want to work with don't want to be sought after in that way. And the best way to say it is this, you're going to attract a higher level strategy partner in the form of an agent and manager when you're already booking work. You, nobody is more valuable with an agent or a manager 
especially an agent and manager that didn't know they they didn't know they were supposed to be picking up a phone to pitch their clients. This is really important. At no point does an agent and manager can you sit back and they do all the work. And of course, I know that you guys know this. Um, at most, an agent and manager may do 10%, a phenomenal agent and manager. But oftentimes the actors are doing, you know, 95 to 100% of the work, even with an agent and manager, and it's okay. Because it is possible to build these relationships with major production companies um, on your own. There's a right way through that. So we get stuck, stuck on these stories, like we can't do it, or we need major credits, or we have to have this. 99% um, of agents and managers didn't know that they were supposed to be picking up that telephone uh, to pitch their clients. Instead, they play a submission game. Um, let go of a story that is sort of a one size fits all approach. There needs to be a one size fits you. That's my issue with these concepts, concepts of niche and type, which I'll get to in a little bit. Um, so let go of this one size fits all like actors access and backstage and like, this could be part of your strategy, but there's, there's a whole other level to the game. So I, I'm gonna try to, you know, keep it clean with my words, but, but we think that when we pick up a phone or we do something brave that, oh my God, everybody's gonna notice, but what if nobody cares, <laughs> you know, sometimes. Um, they don't notice in a way that you think they notice in a way. You know what I'm saying? We think we're making this brave, dangerous choice or we're taking this big, scary risk and making a call, but a lot of people don't care. They don't give a you know what about that kind of stuff. They don't notice in the way that you think they notice. The same is true of making these acting choices. You think like you're doing this radical thing that you but you can't control what people see and you can't control what people feel. How many things do we do it? How many things do we not do in life because we're afraid of what someone's going to think or how we might be judged? This is one of the biggest mindset obstacles to thinking about this. When I introduced the concept, and this isn't a Joseph concept, this is what's happening at, the, at, at another level of this industry. When I introduced the thought that there's a right way to actually pick up the phone, the response comes in the form of all the fear-based advice that's passed actor to actor or could be industry guru to actor, don't do this or you shouldn't do that. Um, that never sat well with me in school and it doesn't sit well with me now. You have a right and a responsibility to reach out and build those relationships to share who you are. So how many things do we not do because we're afraid of what someone's gonna think or how we might be judged. For most people, it's the main reason why we don't do things, right? And we have to let go of these stories about how we think the industry is supposed to go and the fear-based advice. One of those is this concept of niche and type. And this is really integral to the, the, the topic, which is how to build game-changing relationships with major production companies, but it's really the mindset of how to build these relationships. What is the mindset of building game-changing relationships with major production companies. The cold calling mindset. We need to let go of these concepts of niche and type, not because they're not useful to some degree. Niche and type is never your branding. Your niche, and, and I'm gonna recommend everybody, please mute yourself if you're not already muted. I'll just do a quick little mute. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. I do wanna have um, this type of meeting where I can see you guys. I didn't wanna do this as a webinar. I wanna engage with you guys in a little bit. So if you could just stay muted, I would appreciate that. Thank you. And then, and then we'll unmute in a second. Niche and type is useful in that it's sort of an understanding of where we might fit in. Where are the places where we may neatly, you know, be placed, but it has nothing to do with who we are in our branding. And a thousand other, act, a thousand other actors can also do that as well too. So your niche and your type is not your branding. It may be a direction that may be interesting to explore, but it's not the thing that sets you apart and makes you unique, makes you an original, okay? Value proposition is, and let's talk about value proposition. I'll get to what it is, but I wanna share a really fun quote from Westworld. That's a, it's a masterclass in branding. And it's from the first season of Westworld. It's from the, 
last episode of the first season, and I'm not giving too much away, but it's an amazing masterclass in what's the next level of strategy post niche and type. Anthony Hopkins is being sold on an idea for Westworld. And he doesn't like the idea because the designer, um, the designer isn't giving him a good idea. And his response was this, Anthony Hopkins said this, and I want you to substitute when he says the guests, substitute it for the production companies, the people who want to work with you, you want to work with. And then he said this, this is why I'm not interested in that storyline in Westworld. Anthony Hopkins said, it's not about giving the guests what you think they want. The guests, the people don't return for the obvious things we do, the garish things. They come back because of the subtleties, the details. They come back because they discover something they imagine no one had ever noticed before about you. Something they fall in love with. They're not looking for a story that tells them who they are. They already know who they are. In other words, they're not looking for a story about your niches and your types and all the bells and the whistles and things that you do well. They're not looking for that. They're here because they want a glimpse of who they could be. The only thing your story tells me, Mr. Sizemore, is who you are. Are you selling what you do or are you selling how you are going to make somebody else's life better? It's a, mind, it's a, it's a shift in perspective. Again, thinking about the things you do and the niches and the types is useful to some degree, but there's a whole other level to this game. They said it on Westworld, there's a whole other level to the game. There's a whole other level to this industry. And when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change, as Max Planck says, as I said earlier. So what agents and managers really want to know and what actors should be knowing until they have a high level strategy partner is how are you going to sell yourself, pitch yourself when you get on the phone? My friend, Sarah Jackson, who did a phenomenal event with the studio, you can find our conversation on our YouTube channel. It's just the Joseph Perlman YouTube. I know a lot of the, uh, the videos, uh, you know, you guys have seen are through backstage, but, um, it's called a conversation with celebrity manager, Sarah Jackson. And she said, Joseph, when I work with a new actor, I need to know how I'm going to sell them when I pick up a telephone. And I think it's a very clear thing that she said. And it's something that you're going to need to really have a grip on when you do it yourself, because there's a way for you to do it yourself. It's what we do. And it's what many actors do. And it's important that your reps know that. So it was never your reps responsibility to come up with your branding. Um, it's yours to deliver to them on a silver platter. And, and this is a quote from Sarah Jackson. She's one of the most effective managers in the industry. And she runs an amazing company called Seven Summits Pictures and Management. She's responsible for Zoe Deschanel's rise in the early days. I've been working with Sarah now for probably over 15 years. And Sarah, if you're here, unmute and say hi. She might be here. This is a quote from her. She says, this is a tough job, she says. You have to make... Hundreds of calls for your clients, telephone calls, phone calls. And you're lucky if one in 20 pans out to an appointment. She's British, so she calls auditions appointments, which I think is a better word. One in 20 phone calls pans out to a high level appointment. These are pretty good numbers when you consider the one in hundreds or thousands of submissions. Submissions are like throwing pasta on the wall in, in hopes of something that might stick, not knowing that a lot of the roles we thought they're actually casting for are already cast and they're just creating a wide net. They're, they're casting a wide net. Sarah said, it's hard to wake up in the morning and continue to do that for people you don't like. And it's impossible for someone whose work doesn't inspire you. So there's a theme appearing here. In, 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 and to get right to the point, people work with people that they like, they trust, and they respect and who are fun to play with. You see the videos I put up on Instagram. It's, it's about like the, not the obvious things, the things that everyone talks about. It's the, it's the other things, the things that are actually simpler that you don't have to go out and buy because they're already a part of you. And how do you establish that? How do you get the opportunity to establish that you're fun to play with? So it's what, it's what really great reps need to know before taking on new clients. How am I going to sell you when I get on the phone with production and casting? 
It's about cold calling. Steve Jobs said this. He said, marketing is about values. And these are some of the questions to start to like whet your appetite to get excited to start to answer these questions. Not what's my type, not what's my niche. Who are you? What do you stand for? Where do I fit into this industry? What are my core values? What am I all about? What do I believe in? And here's one of the big ones. What are you holding back from showing this industry? One of my colleagues always says, um, the industry wants what you're holding back. To really examine what you might be holding back, both in life, in acting, and in this industry. Is there a part of you, a shadow side, that you're not leaning into? And um, I wanna actually talk about that a little bit. Here's the whole question about this. This is such an important question to answer. What aspects of you, your personality, are you holding back? This is right from the career work that I do with actors where we distill value proposition. I'm gonna describe what value proposition is, and then we're gonna get into the mindset of a cold call because that's kind of more important than the what. When we were you know, looking to move our daughter from one school to the next, one of the greatest bits of advice was it doesn't matter what you learn, it's is learning fun. And it came from somebody who, who means a lot to me. And what aspects of your personality are you holding back? Physical, behavioral, emotional. What are you holding back from showing people in the industry? Is there a shadow side? of yourself, positive or negative, that you're not leaning into that represents an aspect of you? Is there an aspect of yourself that you're not letting shine? As one of uh, my relatives says, are, are, are you hiding behind, are you, are you hiding your light behind a bushel? Do you know what I'm saying? And, and, and because we all are have these like infinite expressions of light. And if we can kind of open it in the right way, we can, we can radiate it to the world. It's one of the benefits of working like this on camera, on a screen, connecting with the world is being able to light yourself up in a location that um, you think is limited, but we can have massive, massive impact. After all, isn't our work connecting through a camera and through a screen and affecting change and having impact on an audience? Marketing is about value, said Steve Jobs. What are you holding back? Making it about them, not about you. Back to the Westworld quote. I, I don't want a story of who I am. We know who we are. We're here because we want a glimpse of who they could be with you. One of my favorite speakers, Simon Sinek, who I quote quite a bit in the video says, um, said something really great. People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. I love his process on his search for finding your why. What is your why? Why do you do what you do? What is it about your people that you love hanging out with? Why do you hang out with them? What is it about them? Certainly not the obvious things. It's not the stuff we put in the special skills section. How do you want to make people feel, you guys? Imagine your fan base. This is one of the power questions I ask in the, again, the one-on-one -on -one career work where we, where we go into the specific pitch dialogue that's you specific is, um, imagine your fan base, okay? Um, it could be a fan base that is current or future. And what do they love about you? How do you and your work make people feel? What is the emotional impact of your work? You're all familiar with Maya Angelou and her beautiful quote, maybe, which is, she said, I've learned that people will forget what you said and people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So know what you want is, a, is the next step and be clear about it. Having a clear vision of the future and not delaying your happiness and confidence is how we trigger momentum. And what does that mean? What is your specific goal? Don't default to what you think you can get, but don't cap it. Don't default to just a series lead or a series regular than when there might be seven or eight or something after that, or maybe having a year of quiet and saying no to this industry for a bit, which is an amazing thing to do at any time, by the way. You know, it's possible to light your light up and hold a clear vision of the future and have everything that you want come tapping you on the back. And the question is this, what is a clear vision of your future? 
Be as specific and descriptive as possible. Don't have an I'll take what I can get attitude and don't cap it. These are the ultimate goals you aspire to achieve. What are the genres, projects, platforms, creators, writers, directors that you want to collaborate with you? And then maybe if you take it to the end, because there's power in going to the end of something. One of our members, Pearls Daily, who is so inspiring to everyone, always says this. She, she said that there's an element of hiding when you're not speaking something out loud. So your, your words create your reality. But we have control over buying the ticket that puts us on the train and takes us to a destination of our choosing. We cannot control the stops that it takes, but you can buy that ticket. And part of buying that ticket is having a clear vision of your future. Here's an example, as I like examples. I want to be a series lead or a series regular on a gritty streaming drama, Netflix, HBO Max, Amazon Prime, Showtime. I want to play a lead or supporting in an indie feature film produced by A24. It's one of my favorite production companies, Ex Machina and, and everything else. That's awesome. I, I want to be in a single camera, multi-camera, hybrid comedy on X, X Network. I want to collaborate on a series um, or film with X producer or work alongside X, X star, you know. So it's important to know what you want and not cap it and not have an I'll take what I can get attitude. Don't default. Uh, and again, you guys, thank you so much for like sharing your time. Our time is like one of our most precious commodities. So it's so wonderful to see you all. And thank you for physically showing up here. Know your industry. It's not enough just to say, I want to be on this one show. Um, what are your, who are your favorite writers, directors? What do you love about what they do? Um, what do you love about it? I'm going to come back to value proposition. I want to take some questions in a bit, but I want to get into the mindset element of this. And I may want to share a value proposition is the wonderful. We have an incredible member of our community, Michael Vincent Berry, who was just on the last episode of better call Saul. Michael, if you're here, I'd love to share your value proposition as I have before. So if you're here, uh, I would, I would so love your, your, um, uh, your comments as well. Value proposition. What is a value proposition? When you pick up a phone to pitch, you have seconds to communicate who you are, where you fit in this industry, and what your value is to the production. Same is true when you walk up to somebody, okay? In person, virtual, it doesn't matter. It's the same. It's easier to connect with people um, like this online around the world. Once crafted, this concise and impactful pitch is something that cannot be ignored. A value proposition is a succinct statement that gets, to, that gets straight to the point. It hits home with what you're offering, why it's beneficial, why you're the answer to what they may be looking for. They don't know what they're looking for. Uh, they're here because they want to be surprised by something they had never imagined before. And they're honestly here because they're not looking for something specific. They want to see something they had never, they'd never thought of. A value proposition is the DNA of all your marketing, social media, email pitches, et cetera. And a lot of businesses or actors neglect to lay the strong foundation before diving in and investing huge amounts of time, money, money, and energy in their career and all the collateral that goes with it, like reels, websites, social media, stylists, PR, et cetera some of which aren't even necessary. I'm a big believer in don't force yourself into social media, do it because you like it. One of our faculty members, Annie Chang's career just exploded in the best possible way this year. And then she was pulled in naturally to social media where she was sharing her show Peacemaker and Super Pumped and, um, and on and on. So don't do stuff you don't like. Um, to build these game-changing relationships with these major industry players, you need to know how you're going to sell yourself when you and your team get on the phone. What are you going to say that can't be ignored, that's so irresistible and exciting that someone's going to say, wow, that sounds awesome. I need someone like you on my team. Please tell me more. This is Harvard Business School value proposition. To get that wow, you show your future collaborators that you understand exactly what they want, Deliver it to them in a simple, easily digestible and baggage free way. And when you start those relationships, you're actually leaving your wants and your needs at the door to make a couple friends as our faculty member, Alex Ashinger, director Alex Ashinger says. 
So it's important that you're brief and to the point about it. In the business world, this is called value proposition. It's a brief statement that gets to the bottom line of what you're offering, why it's useful, and why you're the solution to their problem. It forms the genetic code of all your future marketing, social media posts, phone, email pitches. Um, it's worth time and thought. It forces you to improve your clarity on key strategies like who is the ideal collaborator for you? What need are you solving for them? Who are your prospects comparing you to? What is the number one reason somebody should choose you? Answering these questions, distilling it down to a concise statement is a challenge and overwhelming because they're big questions. This is not just some thing that you can figure out in your head really quickly. It's worth, and I'm gonna share with you an incredible value proposition in a second. Who are you? What do you stand for? Where do you fit in the world? Who are the people you wanna work with? What needs are you solving for them? Who are industry leaders comparing you to? And what is the one reason why you're the best choice? And distilling it down to a brief statement to see instant results is kind of fun and empowering. And I'm gonna share with you a really powerful one. Um, like I said, Michael, Vincent, Barry, if you're here, I would, I would uh, love you to be a part of the conversation. Let me, all right, beautiful here. I'm gonna, there we go, okay. So I'm gonna read you a whole statement. It gets further distilled and distilled, but it's a statement that's not just, um, here, here's an example. Like if someone were to say this guy's niche and type, it would be, he plays bad guys and monsters really, really well, okay? Compare it to this. Hi, my name is Michael Vincent Berry and I'm an actor. I'm most known for my, I'm gonna say something too. I'm going to say it afterwards. My name is Michael Vincent Berry and I'm an actor. I'm most known for my work on Amazon's Them and AMC's Better Call Saul. I just wrapped season two of Paramount's Waco. It was such an honor sharing screen time with Bob Odenkirk on season six, their final season. I received a special Tony nomination for educators for my work in theater education, championing for kids with disabilities. I'm an openly gay actor and proud adoptive father of three deaf Latino kids. I'm constantly being told holy fuck, you scared the shit out of me. How did you do that? Because in real life, I'm just this great, big, lovable teddy bear. I recognize the monsters and villains that I play. I recognize the monsters and villains that I play because I've seen them before. And by playing them, I heal from my past. And growing up, I had five dads by the time I was 15. Five dads, yet no father. Some of them were mentally and physically abusive, and my dream in life was to always have a father and to always be a father. Let me be clear, he says, I am not a victim of my past. Through playing the kind of roles that I play, it's allowed me to take ownership of my past rather than to be a victim of it. I also find humor in everything, inclusive of the genres that I'm known for. The crazier, the better. And lastly, he says this, and this isn't what you're going to unload on a telephone, but you're going to break pieces of this off. Um, I believe that as long as you have hope in life, you have something. We're the masters of our own destinies, responsible for everything that shows up in our lives. We are the creators of our circumstances rather than the victims of them. Life comes through me, not at me, and I believe in the power of choice and manifestation without evidence. When all else fails, just be, and if you want greatness, you just step into greatness. And that is, it, it's an alive statement. It's moving, it's morphing. Um, it's from a whole other level of consciousness and most of it has nothing to do with a couple of his awesome credits that he had. So it doesn't, you don't need to have those credits in order to craft something like that. And yes, that is, you know, uh, uh, Jason Baldwin, um, uh, Jason, man, it's great to, great to see you. Silver star recipient, phenomenal actor and human being is in this room here as well. And, and, and also had such a powerful, has such a powerful value proposition. So cold calling mindset. So all this is, is good, but how do I actually, maybe it hurts my chest to think about picking up a telephone that way. I don't like it. It makes me uncomfortable. And so I'm going to listen to all the fear-based advice past actor to actor telling me, oh, you're not supposed to do that. Oh, I thought you weren't supposed to do that. Or I thought actor's access was the only way through that. You're not supposed to do that. We need to embrace doing what's uncomfortable period, like in life, in acting with our choices. Joaquin Phoenix talks about actively telling every director recently 
that I'm going to do very bad things with my choices to take pressure off of it is if to say, I don't know what it's going to be. Embracing doing what's comfortable. One, we need to let go of outcomes. We need to let go of outcomes. Alan Watts, one of my favorites, some of you guys know him, always says the point of music is not to get to the end of the piece. It's the dance. It was always supposed to be the play and the fun of it. And let go of outcomes. Just like in acting, we start emotionally lit up. We find a hook. It's the thing that makes it so you don't have to act. And then it's blank canvas. We don't know what they're going to do moment by moment. We don't bring our technique into the piece. We don't want the work to smell like it. Great technique is such that we live off the interest of it. It's still there. And there's a cold calling mindset shift is that we want to think about it like not we're going to, we're not going to get something from somebody. You want to go into it just like you would when you're going into a live Zoom or, an, or live this or virtual that. Like I'm going to make a couple friends here. I'm warming up a relationship. Not giving a fuck what people think. And, and saying out loud whatever you need to say to, to, to have a hook for that personally to turn that thought off. What are people going to think? We cannot create and please at the same time. I say that a lot. So getting out of this pleasing mindset is so important. And then lastly, gratitude. Leading with gratitude. What lights you up? What gets you excited about the people that you want to collaborate with? What do you love about them? You know, what do you, what do you like? Like, know the people. One of, one of our, Susan Gale Watts, if you're here, you know, our members, feel free to speak up and introduce yourself. But Susan Gale Watts, one of our members, came to this work a couple of years ago, at the start of the pandemic, because she wanted to feel better, you know? And she did this work and she held a clear vision of her future. And she won Best Actor at um, San Diego Film Awards. And she reached out to Graham Yost, uh, to, I believe it was Graham Yost, uh, Justified. He personally wrote back to her, wrote a personal letter back to her. Um, so it's not, it's not the what, just like acting is how you do what you do. In what way? It's all, it all boils down to behavior, as Robert Duvall says. How are you going to call? What, are your, what do you love about being with your friends? Like, what is the thing that's like fun? And it all comes back to the central point is um, to establish three things when you think about reaching out to somebody and introducing yourself is to establish your fun to play with and you don't have to try to do that it's right there in your voice it's right there in your smile it's in you you are fun to play with what are you holding back and if i maybe don't hold that back would i be more fun to play with or would people not like me you know it's a question it's it's a concern sometimes all of you is enough in my opinion every all of you unfiltered in acting, we get caught up in the words, but your best choices are never found in the text. It's about what you mean. The universe doesn't hear your words. It, the universe hears what you mean. And Marlon, Martin Landau said, the text is only what a character is willing to share, willing to reveal. The 90% they aren't willing to reveal is what we do for a living. So what do I really mean? And how much of that am I holding back? Um... And then what we do is when we have a clear vision of our future, when we don't wait for the results of our success to feel happy and empowered, when we feel it now, I did a video on YouTube for backstage called how to be confident in auditions. You can type it. Someone can maybe put it in the chat. I, I don't want to be looking for stuff online now because it's distracting, but it's a self-guided mindset manifestation work where you can light yourself up to the emotions of your wishes fulfilled not to replace getting that stuff, but to light the fire of momentum to bring it into you versus you efforting your way to it. And it's super, super fun. And when you hold a clear vision of the future, what do you want? Then you know that IMDB Pro is the tool that we use. I tell you guys, if you're SAG after, you get a discount on it. And then we can look at the production companies that make this stuff. And what I do with the actors when we distill value proposition in our work is we reach out to executive producers and we reach out to them in three ways through agents through managers and production offices not to get something from somebody remember but to light the fire of a relationship to establish that you're a colleague you're an equal 
You're fun to play with. Um, and we put our wants and our needs at the door and we leave our niches and our types at the door and we don't send gift baskets. And it's just like a dog getting to know us. You know, it's like, do I like this person? It goes back to Sarah Jackson, my friend who's a manager. She said, Joseph, I don't work with people I don't personally like, trust and respect. And she said, you know, we all have our days. And, um, and I'd like to kind of hear from you guys a little bit more because you hear me talk about this stuff all the time. There's videos here and videos there and conversations that I do, but is something making it hard for you to actually pick up a telephone, to think about reaching out, to, um, to ask for something? There's so much power in asking for something. And again, it's like, you know, you could be this lovable, wonderful freak, which is what we want to be, is not being afraid to look like an asshole or be a freak. And we think we're doing this crazy, wild thing, but nobody else gives a shit, you know? Like, they love us, they care. But that stops us. That kind of thing stops us from taking a risk. So if we can kind of break up some of the fear-based advice, if there's something that you guys would like to share about something that you did that paid off, um, you're never going to burn your hand. There's a really famous story Steve Jobs tells about when he was younger calling Bill Hewlett. He was a kid uh, and uh, asking him a question. Personally, you looked him up in the phone book and ended up getting his first job at Hewlett Packard. You're never going to burn your hand and you're not going to catch on fire. Okay, this is how it works at this other level of the industry. There was a couple of years ago, um, we had the happy hour event at a place called the Wellsbourne in LA. By the way, we still, at the studio, even though we're this international st studio, we work online, we still like to see human beings. And we have local events and we'll have more local events because we like to see each other, even though we like working on camera. Matthew McConaughey showed up at one of these things. He had a couple drinks, he was having a day. One of our actors sidled up to him at the bar and said, hey, Matthew, I had a question for you. And he said, yeah, shoot. He said, you're, you're, you have an Oscar, you have a family, you have everything that an actor could seemingly want. What gets you out of bed in the morning? And he pointed to sort of the back of the bar to sort of where the bottles were. And he said, I see something that I get excited about that I want so badly, just like Brian Cranston did with Breaking Bad. And, and Matthew McConaughey said, said that he, he said that he imagined staking it, laying claim to it, like putting a stake in it and, and making it his. He doesn't know those people. Yeah, he's Matthew McConaughey. And so maybe it's easier for him to do it and maybe it's not. But he was having a day just like everybody else did and he had a couple drinks. And um, and I love that idea of, of seeing something you like, being clear about that and putting a stake in it and making it your own. And it's not like some great science, you guys. Yes, we distill a value proposition we can distill phone dialogue that's you specific. Who do you call? When do you call them? And there's no one size fits all on this. Um, everything you need is inside of you. And how do we kind of peel away the stuff that might be getting in the way of, of radiating it out to everybody else? So one of the things I do want to do is I'd love you guys to raise your hands if you'd like to. I want anybody who might have a question or, you know, what is is there something you get stuck on or how dare you do this? Or, you know, what if somebody gets mad? I mean, you know, talk to me about your journey with this. Talk to me about your resistance to this. Talk to me about maybe you don't feel that you're enough or you're interesting enough or your credits are enough. Let's talk about this. Um, what I also would like to, I'm, I'm going to share with you guys some of, some of my favorite things in a sec, uh, but do raise your hands. I want to thank everybody here for being here. We're not finished with this yet. I'm putting a link to actually come watch our work. You can watch from anywhere in the world. It's a, um, it's an audit link free. You can watch incredible actors from Game of Thrones actors to Last Kingdom actors. Um, we have a couple classes where we are registering right now for episodic season. We have many classes. You can find, you know, more of them on the website, but I'm just sharing some classes where we have some spots available um, in the chat. And I'm going to actually share a bunch of stuff. You just click on these links and you can save them. But I'm going to share some of my favorite videos. These are links to conversations with our faculty, a deep conversation on making dangerous acting choices, next level marketing and branding, which is some review of what we did today um, and, and, and some other cool stuff. And also, I, I mean, I'm not going to overload the chat. I would like to hear from you. And what I'd love you to do is um, 
<sighs> you guys, you got this. There's abundance out there. Don't let anybody tell you that there's nothing for you now. Um, you can do this and you can do it on your own. Um, so I'd love you to introduce yourself and tell us where you're located. And then, um, so you can ask a question and, uh, sort of keep it, keep it like sort of right to the point and then we'll have a fun conversation. Catherine Elam, it's always so good to see you, Catherine. Thanks for being here. Tell everybody who you are and where you're located. I'm Catherine Elam. I am Hi, in Catherine. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, yeah, in America. Hi, Catherine. How you doing? Hi. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Yeah, thanks for being here today. Some it's reviews, some new stuff. Was it useful? Is it useful? Yeah, it's it's always great. I was I was actually started tangenting and reflecting on how um, just coming to the studio, like I love coming to class because I love the vibes here. So I was like, oh, hmm, marketing in action. I think. <laughs> oh, so you're just sharing the love. That's nice. Yeah. Thank I you, do Catherine. Have a question, yes, though. please. So my question is, and maybe, okay, whatever, just ask it. My question yeah, is, <laughs> um, when you're doing these cold calls or um, going into these new conversations, making friends, yes. Um, mm -hmm. in addition to, if it is in addition to the goal of making a friend, yeah. is there any actionable step that you want to be able to walk away with, whether that be like, oh yeah. Um, email me, uh, let's set up a lunch. Like, is there oh, such a good question? Ways walk into that or is it just like a, Hey, it was so nice to meet you. This, thank you, Catherine, for asking. This is really important. What, what's the ask? What's the get, you know, we don't want to put people to work. We don't want to be put to work. We don't want to make people work. We don't want to demand a meeting. We don't, we want to put, so think about it. Like we want to put our wants and our needs at the door to warm up a relationship. We want to warm it up because the asks can come later but we wanna be clear about who we are. And the greatest thing that you can end up with at the end of one of these phone calls, I always tell the actors that we work with in the career work, is an email address so that you can pass your information on to the buffer that you're speaking to so that they can pass it on to the person you're, you're trying to connect with at their discretion. Um, that, is, that is numero uno. So it's an email, it's an email address, Catherine, yeah. Give me one second. I want to open a window. I just had to close it for really quickly. Give me one second, guys. I'm here with you. All right, welcome back. So it's like a uh, garbage trash pickup today day today in los angeles and i closed the door because it sounds like dinosaurs coming down the street in my studio here my dog is freaks out and it's loud but uh it's kind of a heat wave here in los angeles this week so i'm starting to get sweaty so i just had to open a window thank you guys for letting me get more comfortable catherine what we want is an email address that is it that is the simplest thing that we want out of this connection with somebody and we need to get in and we need to get out. And again, everybody's pitch is going to be different. That's why it takes hours to distill this when I work with the actors and the career work. Um, so yeah, a great question. Thank you, Catherine. Thanks for being here and, and doing a shout out to the studio in, in your class. And you've been a member for so long at this point. Um, I'm really, really honored. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. Joshua Stallings and then Crick, Chris and Luke. Um, yeah, so Joshua, tell everybody who you are and where you're located. Hi, I'm Joshua Stallings. I'm located in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, pretty new to the area. I love it. Um, Josh. Hey, Joshua, welcome. Yeah, thanks for hi. joining us. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I yeah everything you do, Joseph, is fantastic. Thanks, Super man. Fan. Yeah, We've absolutely. Got a lot of Atlanta actors in our community. We love our Atlanta oh, actors. There's lots going on there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, just my question is because we, we covered so much today. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's some, I know I was trying to take notes, but if there's like another reference point or another video that we could also refer back to, to, 100%. you know, get, yes, get this information again and that kind of thing. I put it in the chat. Um, so okay. The most recent stuff, I would go to where it says next level marketing and branding. That video, the link is below. That it. one. Okay. Unfortunately, you can't copy and paste, so click the link, stop it, because I can't listen to my voice. <laughs> I always tell actors, mm -hmm. 
your ability to watch your playback does not make you a better actor if you can't watch it like an editor. So I always tell actors, you know great acting because you know what great acting feels like. And you trust how that feels. Not every actor should be watching their playback. That's the benefit of working in real time on camera. So I'd recommend Next Level Marketing and Branding, that video, uh, Joshua. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, for sure. Uh, one of my favorites is How to Make Dangerous Acting Choices, that video. That's a fun one. I like that one. Chris C., welcome. Thanks for joining us today. How are you doing? Can you? Hey, uh, hey. There we go. Can now we can hear me? you. Hey, Chris, tell everybody okay. where you're located. I am here in L.A. Last year, had, well, last week has made one year here. So, yeah, located yeah. in L.A. Kind of hot this week, huh? Mm -hmm. It's getting hotter, too. It's like a crazy heat wave. What's up? Did um yeah, a uh, question or anything? Happy that you're here. Yeah, so I came in a little late, but um, my question is for actors who work as crew in the industry mm -hmm. and specifically reality TV. How can we use that? Like, I guess our experience in the industry as crew. How can we leverage that to kind of get us into? Well, I guess get us on set of scripted. That's a, such a fantastic question. Thank you so much for asking. That's a great one. How can you, re the answer is absolutely. That's why one of the questions I ask in the, it's called the Launcher Career Program. It's on the website. I'm not gonna throw another link into chat. One of the first questions is, do you do something that's not a hobby at a high level? It could be uh, cars, it could be cooking, it could be singing, songwriting, comedy, pro wrestling. We had a lot of pro wrestling, uh, WWE wrestler, wrestling. It is a platform and you can mention, we even have somebody that worked in our community. Um, Mike Fuller, if you're here, you have a phenomenal story that um, uh, Michael Fuller worked with Christopher Nolan on Dunkirk. People don't need to know the specific details of what it was, but if you worked on something, in any capacity, whether it was, you know, and it's great if somebody can recognize it, you can simply say that something to the effect of whatever your experience was, it was a great joy working on the last season of um, House of the Dragon or the current season of the, this, the new Game of Thrones spinoff, which is, which is really good, by the way. <laughs> no spoilers. It's pretty gory and good. <laughs> anyway, I was like, oh, that's, yeah. You know when something's good. But you can say it like that, and but you don't have to mention the specifics. Like, say it was background. One of we had a member of our community reach out to Wonder Woman director Patty Jenkins. She's one of the coolest directors people in the industry. She had done what amounted to background on a big show and connected to Patty Jenkins through her reps. And the and the unfortunate thing about it was the the reps uh, had opened the door to her having a meeting, but the particular actor dropped the ball and didn't get back, unfortunately. And, and I, I know that life sometimes throws us curveballs, but absolutely mention that, but you don't necessarily have to mention because you, 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 you're, you're looking for a job as an actor. So you can be selective about what, you know, like what was your responsibility and say something to the effect of, like, give me an example of what was one of the more recognizable or maybe bigger things that you worked on Oh, Married at First Sight. Chris, it was, uh, say again? Ma are you, as far as crew or? In the yeah, the name of the project. Doing? Like one of the projects. Oh, it's called, yeah, Married at First Sight. Was it, what's the thing at First Sight? Somebody can help me with that? No. Married at First Thank Sight. Thank you, Married at First Sight. And is it produced by a, a production company that's well known or is there a, is there a producer, writer, director, show, showrunner attached to it that somebody would recognize? the maybe the production company kinetic content it's on lifetime great see it's so cool because you can actually highlight that on your resumes uh, it was uh, i recently wrapped uh, married at first sight by this you know what i'm saying like i recently had the opportunity to work on this particular project and you can leave it at that you don't have to get into the fact that it wasn't for the thing that you're looking to pitch yourself for there's sort of a um, yeah there's a really fun way to kind of punch things up while obviously being truthful. I mean, that's how do you take things that happened and kind of punch them up a little bit? So I'd recommend that, Chris. It's a really good question. You guys, these questions are amazing. They're gonna be really helpful to other folks hearing this as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Sure. Oh, Nikki, it's so good to see you, I've missed you. <laughs> Thanks for putting your video on. Mwah! It's so great to see you guys. 
I mean, I really mean this. We, we, we had a conversation with an actor last week. It's like, sometimes we just need to unplug. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want you to hear me telling you to go out and do a hundred things that you don't want to do. And that hurts your chest. It's like, hold a clear vision of the future. Be clear about who you want to do with and go live your life in such a way that you're happy and empowered or light yourself up to it now by finding a hook. Like this isn't about tasking you with a bunch of busy work crap that a lot of people unfortunately load actors up with. Take a bunch of these pictures, go to these workshops, submit on actors acts like, no, that's a one size fits all approach. I reject being, being uh, you know, pushed through a maze of, I'm, you know, everyone, no, there's a one size fits you way to do it. And we have to unthink things in order to do that. Luke, hey, Luke Grasso, welcome. Tell me, buddy, who you Hi, are, where you're located. Hey, Luke. Yeah, uh, Los Angeles, yeah. Um, just uh, two things. One's a question, one was a, uh, a comment. Uh, yes, I'm in the advanced class um, yes. with Annie, and I'm having a very good time. Thank you. I actually, uh, yeah, yeah, no, She's I just so good. Uh, so lucky Annie class, still teaches, too. yeah. Yes. Um, the other night I had a self tape with a friend and she has no exposure to any of your, your stuff other than what I've told her. And, yeah. um, just not a teacher at all, but I've been in enough of your classes that her self tape was kind of flat. And then we were, we did a quick hook. We did the, right. I am one who, and, uh, insanely like the, her performance, like tripled. I mean, I almost Yay. fell over sideways. I just couldn't believe it. Cause I've never seen it like that on someone else who hadn't been exposed to it. So testament here. To your teachings and your well, techniques that's um oh okay we got some music going on i'm gonna say <laughs> thank you so much it was a nice musical interlude luke i'm so happy to hear that um that it's clear and that you were able to translate it at first i was like oh i'm like you guys are asking the questions that i wanted people to ask and i didn't know it it was about like what do i do if i don't have an actor as a reader or how do i make my reader better i can answer that too but congratulations i'm so happy yeah, I mean, it was just it was just insane how noticeable it was like the difference immediately. Like she had a bunch That's of flat beautiful. takes. And I was like, wait, let's try something. I don't want to like yeah. preach technique to her, but I was like, you know, there's this thing I do in the pure class, et cetera, et cetera. And it was just like insane to see how fast it can like work on someone that quick. I'm so um, happy. Yeah, no, wait, I am too. Want a job? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no, uh, the 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 video that relates to what Luke is saying is um. It's the top one. It's find your hook to guarantee audition wins. Again, the link underneath it, click it, pause the video for later, bookmark it. But that talks all about the hook. And we had a whole conversation on that some weeks ago. I'm really happy to hear that. That's yeah. so beautiful. First of all, thank you for helping a friend. You know, like that's amazing. One of our members, Eric Pasoja, I've worked with him for many years. He's currently in this season of The Flight Attendant. And he said, actors, it's your world now, not theirs. Whatever that means, it's your world. We need to invest in making a studio where you are, wherever you are, and it doesn't have to be expensive, but we need friends and we need friends to help us. And one of the incredible things that is happening in this community, and I'm sure other communities, is that you guys are supporting each other, reading with each other. That's the point. If you guys are a member of our studio and are not a part of the Slack community, jump on there, introduce yourself, because you can get readers at all times of day from all over the world if you need them. So we need friends to help us. Thank you for being an awesome friend. That's freaking yeah. cool. More, and I then, wish more so people would do that. The, so now the, the darker side of it for me, with the cold calling, I just wanted to, I guess. Yes, it, please. It out there. So my fears, right, fear mentality that I'm struggling with, mm. um, you know, I used to work on commission, so I shouldn't in a separate life. But just, Like you're used to making calls or you're yeah, used to being yeah, on right. the phone. But yeah. something about calling like the casting director, those people seems terrifying because they're gonna be like, why are you calling me? We don't have time. This is unheard mm -hmm. of what, you know, like you're going to be an actor jail now or blacklisted. And like, I'm trying to get around that or figure out yeah. what content, what, you know, it's subconscious trash. Yeah. And I just hate that. Well, you know it. And I I'll say it again. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, it, your instinct says it, but it's hard to re it's once you have an, once someone plants an idea, mm -hmm. Like I always say to you guys, let go of your idea of character so you can discover her, you can discover them. And, and it's hard when ideas are planted or where someone plants a little fear bug in you because you're always thinking, we want to kind of neutralize those. We want to out fun it. We want to blast it away. That's not useful. This works by asking. This works by putting yourself out there and reaching out and like making a couple friends. And there's a right way to do it. There's a way to do it. Just think about it in, in dating or friendships. There's a way that's off-putting. You guys know that and you're not going to be that way and you're not going to do that 
You're going to leave those at the door for a little bit. And they are, I mean, really listen to that stuff because we're like, with all the media that comes out, it's, it can be easy to be like a trash receptacle for all this, like, don't do this, don't do that. Like, that's insane. And anything that's fear-based, I let fall and blow away somewhere else. I do not let that in me. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. I do not want that from somebody else. And I will stop those conversations. And I think it's important to actively stop conversations where people are putting that onto you. And, you know, when the actors do the pitch work, it takes a couple calls to hit your stride. Nobody's ever been put on a list. <laughs> There's no list. Um, uh, if your call doesn't go well, the worst somebody's going to say is, sorry, we cannot take this call. Have your rep call back. When it does go well, it is like, here's our email address and thank you so much and great to meet you. Um, and um, so it's just like, sometimes we need to find a personal hook. One of the things... I had a friend, um, his name is Leon Logothetis. He's the producer and star of The Kindness Diaries on Amazon and Netflix. He travels all over the world, relying on nothing but the kindness of strangers for food, shelter, and clothing. And he um, was working on a TED Talk, and I helped him. And he said he got really, really freaked out when he goes and speaks to thousands of people. There's this sort of, he, there's a voice that shuts him down that says he's not good enough, that he's not worthy. And we found this really amazing hook where it's almost like he has a little remote control. I'm using my fan remote and it's a click, shut the fuck up. It's a verbal and a physical thing where it, it shuts those things down, shuts those voices right off. Actually, good idea to turn that thing on right now. Um, so I, I, it seems like you kind of already know that those are fear-based things and um, it's good to push back on those things and to F them off with, you know, punch them, punch them away, neutralize them, burn them you know, to do it, but I will keep supporting you doing it. Cause I know we'll be, we'll be working together. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thanks for sharing that. What well, the answer, to the question about the reader, you guys can read with anybody in the world. Okay. Self tapes are done like this. You're shooting with an iPhone or a mirrorless. Um, you have a reader with a good microphone. It's your, your, the, the most phenomenal bookings come from these virtual tapes. And the greatest thing you can do is to read with an actor read with an actor your reader matters your reader's investment in what they're doing matters and if you can't read with an actor you give them our reset button number one which is this great tool where you empower them to play yourself um one of my favorite actors harry dean stanton who was jack nicholson's friend and they lived together for many years said he said the greatest thing you can teach an actor is to play themselves first if you can play yourself first you can drop or anything you want into that. We, we don't become other people. You can't create a humanity and soul more interesting than your own. And he said the greatest lesson he ever learned was Nicholson came to him with a role. He said, Harry, I got a role for you. Uh, he said, it, it's this guy with a bowler cap and an eye patch. He said, but Harry, I don't want you to do any acting. He said, let the text do the character. Just play yourself. And it's so brilliant because you think on one level of consciousness that you're not doing anything, but you're actually trusting that all the work you did is in you, like a properly packed parachute, and you can live off the interest of it, and you're playing yourself being so real, somebody can't tell whether you're acting or talking. Empower your reader with that tool, and you're gonna have a great reader when they can take that edge or pressure off of having to do any acting if they don't know what they're doing. Uh, I wanna hear from uh, Jorg. Uh, Jorg, welcome. Yes, hello, how are you? Am I pronouncing your name properly? Jörg, yeah, you do. You Jörg, do. I should, yeah, I should probably know that because, you know. Yeah, anyway. I've, I've, been, I've been in your studio a long time ago before COVID and, and I was uh, auditing on one of your classes and it was it was amazing. Jörg, um, oh, where, are you, where are you from? I'm originally from Germany, but now I'm in Northridge. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Actually, we just moved here and my seven-year-old daughter just started a new school too, so I feel you. Congratulations. Yes. Yes. That's beautiful. We got to um, get these kids happy. Yeah. Tell absolutely. me a question or thought. Feel free. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, and it's maybe it's a little silly. Maybe you kind of covered some things in that direction already, but yeah, the cold call. So I leave my wants and needs at the door. Yes. Now, can you give me an example? I like examples too. Mm -hmm. uh, what do I say? How do I start this conversation? 
Well, here's the thing. To start the conversation, we need to craft that value proposition. So if we kind of go back to Michael's value proposition, you know, like 1% of, a little more than 1%, very small percent, he's talking about his credits. But most of it, he's talking about who he is as a human being. And so one of the questions that I would ask you is that, remember, I said earlier, you have seconds to communicate in the beginning of the call, you know, who you are, what your values are, and, you know, that you're a colleague. We want to come at it with an attitude and a mindset that we're a colleague and we're an equal. And we need to, we need to answer this question, which is, is there a credit? This is a great question because um, your questions are filling in things that, that um, I haven't spoken about. What is a credit or project that you're most known for, proud of, excited about that someone else in the industry could recognize? Now, here's, I'm gonna, here, here are the whole thing out loud. It sounds professional. It establishes you best. You're, it's recognizable. Have you worked on any major production in any capacity? It doesn't have to be recent. Even if it was just background or your footage got cut, you can still mention your work on this project. This can also be an award mention. I'm most known for my work on the Amazon Prime Series X. I was recently nominated for X Award at X Festival. Keep it brief. If you're a trained actor and don't have any major credits, it's also okay. You could say I'm most known for, I was recently nominated for, I recently won, I starred in, I was in the last season of, my work has been featured on, I created the podcast pilot feature, I wrote, produced, and starred in. I starred or worked opposite such actor. And so, and, and it's okay to also simply say that you're an actor. So it's, it's in how you're answering these questions. Like I said, there's no one size fits all. And then also it's kind of cool to lead with gratitude. If there is gratitude felt for somebody to mm -hmm. be able to say to somebody, listen, you know, I, I, I want to thank such producer for the consistently excellent level of production and projects that they make. I'd love to collaborate with, you, you know, it's all so quick. We're not rambling. We don't want to get into, Hey, who are you? And. I'm an actor and I'm a big fan. No, no, no. We want to get, we want to get in and we got to get out. It needs to be surgical, strategic, like, you know, Navy SEALs level, you know, that kind of situation. But it really has to do with the question. Like there's not a one size fits all. It's, are you grateful for something? Is there something that you feel that you're most proud of, even though it might be something small or footage got cut or, you know, or something big? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's important to answer those questions and to maybe lead with that in a conversation. That's something that's quite important. Um, and then to also, the reason that we ask all the questions about ourselves is we're not going to unload, you know, the whole value proposition. We're not going to unload all that on the phone. This is language that you have to describe yourself that feels empowering. That doesn't feel like you're tooting your horn because down the line, what we're looking to do is schedule general meetings with producers executive producers, showrunners, casting directors. I always say this, great casting directors and production companies schedule general meetings with actors. They don't do casting director workshops where someone is on a higher level than other people. No, this is a, let's meet and let's hang out. Let's see if we like each other. Let's sniff mm -hmm. each other and see if we're fun to play with kind of a thing. So you're, cool. you're just a couple questions to really think about. I would recommend, again, the video I put in the chat because I, you know, it's some review. I'm actually going into more detail here than I may in that video, but um, these are some really good questions and uh, thank you for jumping in here. And, and Do you think, would it make sense to, to talk about something that's not directly acting related, some credits that are also maybe arts or maybe some kind of a performing arts, but not necessarily acting? It's a good question. And it was, uh, Chris, I believe asked it earlier. It's like, let's say we do something that's kind of like, like, here's the deal. Is there something? Right. So you, you want to mention that other thing if it's like this. Is there, um, uh, bu, 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 there's the question. Okay. Is there something that you do that's not a hobby? Other artistic interests you have besides acting? We're not talking about hobbies because we don't have to mention that it was background or, or crew. We can say, other artistic skills you actually are established in and platforms you had. It could, you could be a writer. How do you, how do you identify? Are you an actor writer? Are you an actor comedian? Are you an actor comic? Are you an actor singer songwriter? It's okay to just be an actor. There's so much power in that too. You can mm -hmm. say, I'm an actor and a producer director. I'm an actor and I'm a, 
I'm a chef, songwriter, podcaster, award-winning dancer, you know, gotcha. but not if it's just something that I did once for fun. If it's something that like you come from the world of professional ballet or singing, songwriting or comedy or cars, mm -hmm. what a great thing because like we, we have a, a member of our community, Miles Burris, who's a, who's a football player and part of his value proposition is showing how he can, you know, helm a franchise, a football franchise. And it's like nothing compared to what he has to deal with on the field, the demands of what he's going to experience on set. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's important. It, there, there's a way to incorporate that and you should incorporate that a hundred percent. Sometimes folks that are transitioning from other disciplines, uh, there's a member of our community who's an Olympic gymnast. If you're, if you're here, um, feel free to introduce yourself, but it's like, that's not a limitation. You're not starting from scratch. That's like, a that's going to make for an easier transition to build these relationships. So mm -hmm. this is all fuel for your call, for your calls, Jörg. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm going to just take two more. We'll do Julia, uh, Jesse Camacho. Jesse, are you here? I saw you pop in. If you're here. It's great to I see am. you. I am. I'm here. Hi. Um, can you introduce you? I'm going to get to Julia and Jason, but Jesse, can you introduce yourself? Because you're on fire. Jesse is, we've been working together for years. You worked with Robert De Niro last year. Your career is on fire and you mindset wise are on fire in the most beautiful way. Can you tell everybody who you are and where you're located? Hi, um, I'm Jesse. Jesse Camacho and I am in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida right now. <laughs> shooting well, justified yeah and you spend a lot of time there and it doesn't stop you from not shooting things like justified right your location absolutely not on That's the right. contrary every everything with self tapes has been uh amazing being able to be home and yet be able to audition for different markets i yep. um next week i go to atlanta to shoot a project called houston i'm on two episodes of that Congratulations, and Jesse. Thank you. Okay, and then I go to say... Puerto Rico in October to shoot a okay. film. So I'm all over the place. Okay. Which is you're great. working on Justified, dude. Congratulations, Jesse. Yeah, thank you. And my scenes are opposite Timothy Oliphant, who is amazing. You know, you know, you've heard a lot of what I you know, we've been working together for longest of almost anybody in some ways. What would I don't know, Jesse, what's what would be the most empowering thing? that you would say to this crew who's maybe some some of these folks are new to this type of thinking in terms of the mindset, being proactive, like, I don't know, what would you say to someone who's just kind of entering this space, learning about this stuff to empower them? Well, I would definitely say that you, you know, you, you, as you said, you cannot expect your agent to do the work for you. And I yeah. think a lot of actors just kind of sit back and it's like, I'm not getting submissions. I'm not getting auditions. Um, you definitely have to go out of your way and look up who's booking what, who's doing what, and reach out to those people and make those connections. And even if, you know, like on Instagram, on all these platforms, Instagram, Twitter, um, which are great platforms. Let me see if I put my video and you can see me. Sure. Oh, can you see me? It's okay. So well. Hey, Jesse. It's so great to see you. <laughs> Sorry, I was just coming in from picking up my kids. That's right. Uh, bringing them home. Thing, yeah. Um, so yeah, just you know, even you know, getting on all these platforms and being able to reach out to these casting directors, to these directors, you know, dropping a quick, "Hey, I love your work. Oh my god, I was such a fan. I love that show. Yeah, my favorite scene was this, or or something like that." You know, you put yourself into their minds. So when auditions come, you know, you're you're in their in their brain. Yes, and I think that's worked out tremendously for me. Um, I don't wait for my agent. You know me, I'm, I'm all over the place. <laughs> I do. And that's, yeah, that's, that's a really good thing. Um, the, thank you, Jesse. Um, the other thing I was going to say is like the way that you got to work with Robert De Niro was interesting because you went into a piece, you didn't know what it was going to be. How many lines did you think you were auditioning for when you did that? Like three, <laughs> three freaking three lines. lines. How many lines did you speak on set? You didn't even know it was with Robert De Niro. I had no idea. I, yeah, Robert De Niro, Leslie Bibb, Kim Cattrall, Sebastian yeah. Maniscalco, I mean, Doug Rashi. I got to work with all these amazing A-listers, which yeah. I had no idea I was working with until I got the final uh, call sheet like uh, two days before. 
obviously. Um, and what did you do when you I found like, out? Oh my god! I was, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I got so nervous. Obviously, I was like, "Holy!" Oh, yes, god. yes. And then I called my agent, and I was like, "You're not gonna believe it." But um, what did you do with those lines? You see, the thing is, like, how did you handle it? You're a total professional. You've been training for it your whole life. You went in. And you didn't just say this was a throwaway thing. I mean, the point of this yeah, is no, you don't know I, I whether three. At, yeah. Yeah. No, I work the same way we do in class. Um, I mean, I've been working with Joseph for those that don't know me for years, like over ten years, I think. Yeah. Now. Um, so I still did the mindset work. I still did the, you know, the I am one who work. I still prepare like who's who, where's everybody at. You know, do the scene, watch everybody paint the scene. All yeah. that stuff. Find a hook. And then I just, you know, did my lines and I prepared for it. Like if it was, you know, a bigger role, exactly the same. And yeah, I was blessed that I got to then work with all these amazing actors. And it was so much fun because it was comedy. So I got to improv a lot. You, you spoke um, more than three the lines. Actors, yeah, the actors were giving me even more to work for. And they were actually including me more um, than what the actual uh, scene called for, which was great um yeah it was awesome it was an amazing experience yeah just because you think it, you spoke more than three lines right jesse yeah oh absolutely what yes yes you a spoke lot a lot of lines um just because you're doing what you think is a co-star type of role does not mean they're less of a human being in a specific situation than the top of the show. I mean, just that that's the way that it is. Because this is another fear-based thing. Fear advice is like, oh, you're not supposed to do anything in these. Well, anything you do gets let go anyway. And so you wanna plant and invite a whole human being up through anyway. Jesse, congratulations on your life. Yeah, thank you. And even with the with the movies that I just did, you know, um, here in Miami, which are on Lifetime right now, when I went in um, to work with this director, I actually did my homework. So I knew who she was. I looked yeah. her up. I watched some of her videos and I had stuff to talk to her about, not just like, oh, thank you so much, but like, oh my God, you're a female director, this, that, da, 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 da. And then she cast it. And that was just like a, a day player role. And then yeah. she casted me. She actually requested me specifically and gave me an opportunity to audition for a supporting role, which then later I booked. And that's on my Instagram, which was really funny how it all yeah. happened because I kind of just posted it up there. And she actually responded, and I was like, "Wait, what?" So well, that you was have like cool a really too. nice. Yeah. You have a phenomenal like organic like Instagram thing. A lot of actors feel like they they have to do something, but one of the coolest things that you one of the things that's brilliant you do those like like from audition to screen things, which are so cool. By the way, <laughs> anyway, check Jesse out. And she's yeah. Jessie. And Emily the Criminal is on theaters now. If anybody wants to watch, that was awesome. What is it? We'll say that again. What is it? And then I want to get to Julia um, and Jason. Emily the Criminal is, is on theaters. Is a movie with Aubrey Plaza and Theo Rossi, where I played a cop. Cool. And that's in theaters right now, playing Holy right now. Crap! I gotta yeah, tell Rachel so awesome. I can do a shout out. I yeah. gotta remember that. <laughs> Jesse, you are so inspiring. Congratulations to you, mom, actor, and and you're. I'm glad you turned your video on because it says it all. I mean, listen, life is life and we have intense yeah. moments and stuff, but you're lit up. You could start a scene right now. You're, you're, you're totally lit up. And the thing that always is exciting for me when I work with you is when you, when you do it your way, when you find the way to do it the way you would do it, it just, it explodes uh, with cool and fun and all that. So your way, your way is there's, there's all the power in your way of doing things. Thank you. And for those of you who have an audit Joseph class, like, dude, you're missing out. Oh, they go can do it. Try, go check it out. It will mind blow you. <laughs> it's amazing. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks, guys. Um, hi, Ju thank you, Jesse. Great to see you. Julia Banash, welcome. Am I pronouncing your name well? Hello. Um, Julia Banash, but Julia. Julia Banash from <laughs> Österreich or Deutschland? Deutschland. <laughs> cool. Very cool. Hi, Julia. Yeah. Welcome. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Thank Hi. you for doing this. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you guys and, for being here. Um, I have a question I'm here to share. Um, Say that again. You, you have a, a fear, question? Um, if I would. I have a question and a fear to share. Oh, perfect. Go for it. Yes. Okay. Um, first of all, the fear. Um, when I would like to reach out to someone, I don't want to annoy them or steal their valuable time. And sometimes I also get nervous when talking to native speakers. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> That's connected to the question a little bit. I bet a lot of other folks have that fear. This is what I was talking about in the beginning. You know, it's, um, you know, uh, it, it, it's like, yeah, I, I, people, but the, the people that you're calling, what if they don't care about that? It's like, um, it's like they don't notice it in the way that you think they notice. And I always say, like, how many things do we not do in life because we're afraid of what someone's going to think of you or how you might be judged? And and I said, for most people, it might be the main reason why we don't do things. And so what I would recommend for you, Yulia, whether we work together or not, to watch the video I put in the chat called the mindset work, the mindset manifestation work, because I work with actors in the classes on the them that's actually coming into the call, coming into a room, walking back home. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd recommend that video if you haven't seen that. So if you can bookmark that for later. Yeah, I've, sorry, I've seen that. Oh, good. <laughs> I've been to watch all your videos on um, back Thank you, Yulia. <laughs> Love them. Um, and question. Um, the question, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, um, I'm following a few casting directors on Instagram and one recently a few weeks back followed me back uh, out of the blue. And um, Great. I didn't know how and if to reach out to them. <laughs> Yeah, but I didn't know how and if to reach out to them. So, oh, uh, well, first of all, that's fantastic. Um, by the way, how did you feel when they reached out to you? What was the first emotion that you felt when you saw that they reached out to you? I was excited, happy. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. So what I would absolutely do is to say, hey, hey, um, like, thank you so much. I love your work. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, be, have some familiarity with, with what they do. If there's something that you really like, you can let them know. See, that's that's where you have an opportunity to lead with gratitude. And you could say is like, hey, thanks for the follow. Or thank you. Did they, did they follow you or did they write something? No, they followed me back. Fantastic. Hey, X, whatever their name is, thanks for the follow. Um, I really love uh, these particular projects, or you could let them know you can do a little gratitude thing. It's, it's, um, it's phenomenal to, it's great to meet you. Thank you so much. You know, like something like that, something super simple, you okay. know, it's sort of like, think about it. Like maybe I'll make a friend and, and again, also to take the whole anxiety out of it. These are people, casting directors, nobody's above anybody else. Like I tell you guys, they don't make the final casting decisions. And so don't, don't give them like, don't, they're an important part of the process for sure. But it's the network that makes those decisions. The casting director brings it to the network. So you could just think about it like I'm, I'm just making a new friend and just thank them for the follow and let them know what you like and put a little gratitude uh, into there. Is that okay, useful? Thank you. Yeah, that's oh, sure. complicated. Thank you. <laughs> Yulia, thanks so much for supporting those videos and for coming in here and speaking today. And um you know, I could, I could give some really sort of short answer on the, you know, I talk about this in the video. We have a member, Catherine DeSev in Montreal. She's a phenomenal actor. I mean, to really got to ask the question, am I at the level as an actor at that Olympic best? And only you can answer that. You can talk about it with your coaching class, obviously, but great actors know what great acting feels like. Is it fun? Is it effortless? Are you having impact? Does it feel like me? Like when you're feeling consistently, you know, you know where the work is like that, um, you know, that, that's also something to think about as well, too. Yeah. I'm going to, a couple of folks trying to get back into the, into the waiting room here. Yulia, thank you so much. And, um, good to see you. Thank you. Yeah. I was going to say that it's not like you got, you got to just, you got to just do it. You got to just throw yourself into it and get comfortable, like familiar, uh, with asking, even though it hurts your chest, we need to, we need to just do it. And it's okay to not do it sometimes as well, too. Jason Baldwin, uh, always so phenomenal to see your value proposition is fire as well, too. Tell everybody who you are and where you're located. I'm psyched to work with you again. You're jumping back into the studio soon. Yeah. Uh, I'm Jason Baldwin and I live in LA, but I'm in Colorado right now. So I've been, I've Welcome. been working with Joseph since April, I think. That's right. Um, thanks for being here. Always. I, I love, I love watching you on here. Was it useful? Like did some new stuff that you learned? Always is. Um, I just kind of wanted to say like, cause I've, I've done the cold calls cause I've I'm been, like pulling up your value proposition as we speak. Cause it's so freaking good. Anyway, go ahead. I I've been doing the cold calls. Cause I mean, I started with you doing the, uh, the program. Yep. My dog's over here shaking himself. 
That's so cool. just uh just kind of like a testimony to everyone else like it is actually terrifying when you do it but it's it joseph literally what he tells you happens happens so like i i called i called a high level uh agent and it went to the switchboard and they i just asked for the agent went right to his office and the assistant picked up so I mean, it, it happens. happens. You just got to be ready for it. And they won't remember you if you don't do well. So just call back in a month or so. <laughs> Compared to what you've gone through in your career and your life, how scary or difficult is what you're doing on the phone? Oh, way, way scarier. Way really? Scarier. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Way scarier. I don't, I don't know why, but something oh, that I, I didn't see in the packet later on is, is if you are doing something, you know, the just workbook like, after things. the session. Yeah. Yeah in the workbook like if you if you're sitting there just playing with a pencil or looking at something else it calms you down so much and that's oh, you good. i told you to be distracted on the phone in the in the workbook yeah yeah absolutely can i share your value proposition what, anytime you want you thank know, I'm you always, i'm always here. um i want to share jason's uh because why the heck not because what's the use of just explaining this without showing you and all that and so uh, I think this is maybe the most recent there, there may be there, there's some other versions we were playing with, but I'm going to send the version I sent to you. And, um, is that cool? Jason is, I think it's the version I sent to you originally, but I know we've been passing it back and forth a bit. Yeah. I, the, the last one in our emails, do you want to like, send me the last one or do you, should I read the one I sent you originally? Um, or do you want to send me the most I mean, recent one? You just sent the last one you sent. I think we cleaned it up. I, I don't think it matters. It's cleaned up a little bit. Can we you just send it to me now? Moment. I want to take one question and then I'll read it. Okay. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. If you could send me the most recent one, just because I don't, just the, the less I, I have to sort of move through emails now, Um, the better. Hi, Akshay. Welcome. Akshay, am I pronouncing your name right? Right? Yes. Yes, you are. Am I audible? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, perfectly audible. Yeah. Where are you located? I am an actor based in Mumbai, India. Oh, and phenomenal. I'm honored that you're here. What is it? Um, what day and time is it for you? It's, it's 2 a.m. Uh, uh, thank, in, thank you for, thank you for being uh, up. Thank you for being up with us. Thank, thank you for, for all that you do. Uh, your it's, it's been a tremendous source of strength, your videos and your, uh, the articles that you share. And I've had, I've, I've had the privilege of auditing your uh, advanced class as well, which was a great, great joy. Um, so yeah, I've, I've always been, uh, inspired by you know, the entire community here. Really. It's, it's fantastic. And you, of course, Thank I won't, so I won't much. take, I, I won't take much time because I know we're, we're on the clock, but, but you know what? It's, it's okay. You don't, I would say to everybody, don't worry about it. Let, let somebody else decide how much time and all that. I, I would love to hear what you have to say. We'll stop in a little bit, but if we didn't love this, I don't think we'd all still be here. So go for yeah. it. Go for it. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, the the Indian context is a little it's a little unstructured when compared to how it how it how it happens in the U.S. and in the U.K. Uh, but I've always had the ambition to sort of work in the West, so um, which is why I I always keep tabs uh, with what's happening. Yeah. Uh, in the off chance that I can at least make sure that uh, with regards to at least the standard of work that's happening. Uh, sure. Is uh, one one thing that that again so we don't have the concept of agents uh, in India. We have to sort of like either go at it on our own or it's all about who you know really as it is in most in, in most industries yeah it's very uh, different outside of the u.s we work with a lot of international actors and it, it, it there are differences and similarities but a lot of more differences in many ways yeah but you can in, in terms of the pitch work it's still the same despite the differences but but go for it ask your question i'd love to hear my, my it. question was that that you've had an opportunity to sort of you know get a foot in the door and you've met these people and you've sort of um done the groundwork they know what you can do and then yeah. when you try to reach out to them again uh like this has happened to me i've been trying to reach out with this one person i really wanted to work with for the longest period of time and uh i saw them put out a story because a lot of people reach out and they're like okay we please don't reach out to us and then i just message them because i have a personal relationship so mm -hmm. then then how do i share you know new work or new information that i've a, a movie i've done or, or a show that i've been a part of or new headshots and they're like we know what you look like actually we'll get oh, you're talking to you. about with people who have said we get it already yeah 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 how do you how do you how do you circumnavigate that because yeah. i try to reach out with those people and those have become dead ends unfortunately and that makes you think uh, similar to what luke asked like are you an actor jail have you been blacklisted what's happening yeah. here how do you how do you, how do you overcome that? Because you don't want to be persistent. Be I know persistence is is key, but you don't want to sort of put them off and set them off as well. That they, True. They really, so how how does one sort of work around that? And I think this is it's a great question. Really help. 
a really Thank good you. sort of final question. Um, Couple things actors have said who have taken this work and 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 just launched these massive careers. People like Kelly Ryder, she calls it being pleasantly persistent or pestering politely. Now, if you have people, whether they're relationships, you think about dating and relationships, like you don't want that. That's not a response that 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 means that person is. Let's leave that person alone right now. Let's leave that person alone. I would learn how to reach out in a better way. I'd learn how to make a better call. And I would say to reach out instead of as somebody who wants something, to reach out as a colleague, as an equal. Hence the value proposition work that I do in the in the Launch Your Career program work with the actors. Like that, it's worth taking the time to learn how you personally are gonna reach out because it's different than how Jason's gonna reach out. It's different than how Murray's gonna reach out. And it's great to see you, Murray, too, and everybody here. So, I mean, like everything we talked about today, it's like, how would you kind of connect in the way that you would if you were to make a couple new friends? That's how we need to do it. And so I would just learn how to make a better pitch, basically, leave those people alone for the time being, and once you know how to sell yourself in a way, obviously that doesn't feel like selling, then at some point, some months later, you can reach back to those people in a more powerful way where they're gonna look at you from another level of consciousness. The people we connect with, we're not just reaching out once, we're following up a couple times a year to warm up a relationship, to build trust, um, because things start to happen without you pushing on it. One of the the trademarks of great acting is effortlessness, a feel of effortlessness. Are you efforting too much in your career? And then is it fun? Not necessarily. It's not so fun when that happens. So I would really learn how to make a better pitch. Do the work with me if, if you can at some point. Watch the video I put in the chat. Like what rewatch this video when I when I, you know, when I send it out to folks, to people that want to listen to this. Um, that's what I would recommend is to, is to learn how to make a better pitch because the person you are, you are right now is really fun. It's somebody that I would want to hang out with. I would want to work with. You imagine adding all the wants and needs to that. It, it, it could get a little like one, one actor, one member, a, a wonderful person, like a great human being sent a big gift basket to Vince Gilligan. And it's of course, didn't hear any response because it's like, Imagine how that would feel in a friendship or dating. You get this big gift basket from somebody and we haven't even warmed up the relationship yet. So those are my quick thoughts on what you're saying. And uh, I greatly appreciate, is that useful? Absolutely, yes, thank you. As always, Joseph, as always. <laughs> thank you, you're so sweet, you're so kind. You. Like, you imagine like this person who, obviously this is who you are, just like someone getting to know this person. This is the whole thing, it's like, um. I don't know, one of my best friends in, in Brooklyn, Daria, she's a lawyer. We used to hang out together in Park Slope. She'd always say, um, I love hanging out with you because we can have stupid time together. And it's not where we're being dumb, I and mean, we're not dumb, but stupid time where we can turn off our heads and just like not have to be anything for anybody or do anything. Like that's the kind of mindset. Really this whole conversation, I, I wanted to talk about how to build relationships, I did. But I became, as I was getting closer to this conversation with you guys, I became more interested in what's the mindset behind it. Yes, it's important to know what you're going to say. And it's not a one size fits all, but it's more important to know like why you're saying it, what the voice is, how you're saying it, and the emotional place you're in when you pick up a telephone. Um, so thank you guys. Thank you all so much for, I just so lucky to, Everyone thanks me for creating this community, but I thank this community for um, this thing is alive. This is a living, breathing community with a massive, you know, connect around the world. And I invite you guys for free to come watch. I invite you guys to do the career work with me, to jump into one of our open spots. It's four weeks, you know, and it's, it's ongoing, but, you know, see how it feels. And um, some of you guys know we have this amazing collaboration with... Uh, leaders of Asia's entertainment industry, Japan, every week, PAA Asia, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time. We work with Japan, writers, directors, producers, Amazon execs, writers, every single freaking week for two and a half years. And um, New York University, we're now bringing work into New York University uh, mindset work. We have a monthly masterclass that I teach for them, and it's all open to our members. And 
I just thank you guys for like loving this the way that I love it. I feel just really lucky to be part of this kind of community. So thank you guys so much for your time. Our time is so valuable. How do we solve the problem? How do we make a call in 30 seconds to save us from like a year of having to wait for something? So you guys got this, you can do this. Um, and I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day. It's so just great to, I'd like to hang out and have sort of a virtual happy hour with you guys right now. George, it's great to see you. Monica, like it's just everyone in here. Thank you guys so much. Love you guys. You got this. And um, it's okay to take a break from it as well too. It's okay just to like not want to have to do stuff that doesn't feel good. It's like now more than ever, it's like we can identify, oh, I don't want to do that. That person's saying something that is not going to be fun for me to do and I need to evaluate that. We're all here because we love acting. Um, so I will see you all soon. We got classes and stuff this week. You guys can audit and um, and you can jump in. Our two classes, we have spaces in Matt Beebe, one of our actors, one of the videos. You can meet our faculty. You can see, see what they're phenomenal. It's all the same work. Advanced class Wednesday at 11 a.m. We have a foundation class. We're a next level studio, so it's all going to be the same uh, breakthroughs every class. Foundation class Mondays at 7 p.m. with Alex Ashinger. Of course, that leads the way into my classes for those that may be interested. And in, um, so um, I'll see you soon. I could just hang out forever with you guys. Take some uh, deep breaths and uh, have some silly time with you guys. <laughs> I'll see you all soon. Are you going to read the proposition? Oh, my God. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, thank you for somebody for saying that shit. Jason, are you here? Jason, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay, good. Thank you. Jason, I have the updated value proposition. Oh my God, thank you guys. What a great way to close. <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is Jason Baldwin and I'm an actor. I get I just like I gotta like I get goosebumps reading your I'm also a veteran and the recipient of the Silver Star. I served in the army and then worked for the CIA. I was fortunate enough to serve in the 173rd Airborne Brigade and be among the bravest men I could have and be among the bravest men I could have hoped for. I deployed to Afghanistan three times in the army. My second deployment was 15 months long and would end up as the bloodiest year in that Afghanistan war. It sucked. I'm not a normal veteran. I've been in hundreds of firefights, including the Battle of the Ranch House, where I received the Silver Star, the third highest medal for valor. It was a four hour firefight. We were outnumbered seven, five to one. I was forced to hold the front line by myself for 30 minutes while others were pinned down. Not a single soldier died from this battle. I lost 27 colleagues in this Afghanistan war, friends, brothers, leaders, and I wasn't allowed to grieve. I had to continue on. There was a day that I found out that eight of my friends had died and I got into about six firefights that same day. If you go into grief, it could cost you your life. Writing is also a passion of mine. My goal is to give back to the veteran community. I'm writing a film called Tourniquet about veteran suicide. We veterans do the same thing with our emotions, cutting them off like tourniquets. I'm striving to bring a story to life that'll educate the public of the darkness veterans hold within while also spreading the message to others that we're not alone and that we can fight this new battle together. It's my goal to create a program for veterans to let go of shit, to become human again and reintegrate into society. I love playing powerful roles like kings and emperors, great heroic people. I also like historical projects. I'm obsessed with the Roman Empire. I also love the simple guy love story. I'm a very closeted romantic, Jason says. I'm an extremely resilient person. I've been at war my whole life. I had to raise myself. I moved in with my best friend in high school. I didn't have a choice. I didn't really have a choice. My values are fairly simple, I'm very loyal. Respect is very big for me as well as honor and personal courage. There's a lot going on there. And Jason, thank you for letting me share that. Um, thank you, like, again, thank you for your service. Thank you for, like, it is an honor to know you. I look forward to really looking over your new headshots, you know? Um, and I cannot wait to jump into the work with you because Jason's been working with us in our other classes. And um, Jason, you're so inspiring. I mean, this thing, this is just like we get to keep dialing it in from there. We get to figure out what part of this we're bringing into a phone conversation, what part of this we're going to speak when we meet somebody. I mean, you can bring this to Gary Getzman. You can bring this to Tom Hanks. And, and we've talked about this. So, Jason, thank you for letting me share this. So inspiring. Oh, thank you, Jason. And um, 
Yeah, and, and who, who reminded me to share that? I want to give you a big hug and a thank you. Was that you, Catherine? Oh my God, Catherine, you're a rock star because I would have been like cursing if I forgot. Thank you guys for a beautiful, beautiful connection. And um, I know we'll see each other again soon. Okay, much love and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.